Welcome to the Militia Gaming community. I'm Trigger Militia, and in this video, we're taking a closer look at Goliath's amazing 224 run on Sonic. Let's go! The Militia Gaming community and Dave Loves Games came together to create a community Discord. If you'd like to join the Discord, there's an invite link in the description down below. This is the best way to keep up on what's going on with both of our channels. So make sure you hit that invite link and we'll catch you over there. Goliath is one of the most skilled racers in Need for Speed Heat. So I'm really glad we were able to work together on this video. I'm gonna be showing you exactly how he achieves this time and talking about general driving and cornering for this race. There is so much information in this video. There will be advice for players of all skill levels. Now, I do want to be clear, there is no official global leaderboard for Need for Speed Heat. All we have is what we can find on YouTube, so to call this time by Goliath a world record would be a bit presumptuous on my part. That being said, I looked everywhere I could find Need for Speed times, and this was the fastest time I could find with video evidence to back it up. I'm sure there are people in chat rooms declaring their time a world record, but without having the video evidence, it's impossible to know for sure. All this is just to say, don't get too caught up on the name of this video series. This is meant to be a tutorial style video in which I dissect some of the fastest runs in Need for Speed Heat. World record just sounds really awesome. All right, let's get into it. First up, let's take a look at his build. It's no surprise that Goliath is using the 911 Carrera RSR. It is the fastest car in the game, and I'm pretty sure that's unanimous. He's using the 3.5 liter V6 engine with all Ultimate Plus engine parts, Ultimate Dual Turbo, 5x3 pound NOS, track suspension, sport brakes, race tires, Elite Plus clutch, Elite 7 speed gearbox, Super Track differential, NOS refill, and NOS duration. He also minimizes his steering sensitivity for greater accuracy and maximizes the downforce to have the most amount of traction when taking turns. The other thing to note is that he's using sport brakes. This is a conscious choice on his part because the sport brakes don't bite quite as much as the Elite and the Pro brakes do. This allows for better brake modulation and better control. Now, Sonic is one of those courses that if you're in an online lobby, you're likely to come across people starting a race for. It seems to be one of the most popular races in the game, given that it starts very close to the house, it has a large payout, and a lot of people have put their times up on YouTube. That being said, there are seven critical points during this race. That's to say seven points during this race that you have to do certain things in order to keep your speed or in order to increase your speed and get a better time. Those seven things are the starting line, turn one, the jump, the city, the shortcut, the uphill turn, and in the final leg of the race, the highways. The reason Goliath can put up such a fast time on this race is because he executes those seven things extremely well. All right, let's get started. Because Goliath races with a manual transmission, he has the ability to control his launch better than if he was using an automatic transmission. With an automatic transmission, my suggestion is to hold down the gas until the countdown timer reaches 2, then release it and press it again on go. This will allow the RPMs to drop a little bit before you start the race, and thus giving you a fairly good launch. Goliath starts the race in neutral and immediately shifts to third gear on go. That's because third gear is the best launch gear for this RSR with a 7 speed gearbox. Also notice, he is holding down the gas and the NOS button before the race starts. A little tip for those of you who don't know, you can hold down the NOS button to move through all of your NOS tanks. You do not need to tap the NOS button for each tank that you want to use. He clears the traffic by moving across the middle to the left side of the course. That side tends to be much more clear on this race. Three bottles of NOS are used back to back starting immediately upon go. Using NOS to launch is definitely recommended. It will help your car through the lower RPMs for each of the gears and provide a much appreciated boost to get you to your top speed faster.
This first turn looks pretty simple, but it is a critical moment because it sets you up for a long top speed section, and depending on how you take it, you will either be close to your top speed already, or you will have scrubbed way too much speed and lose a bunch of time. As you can see, this is a sweeping left-hand turn that can be taken at around 215 miles an hour. You should be approaching this turn at full speed and without braking, will be able to make the turn if you take the correct line. This is the case with many of the turns in heat, especially with this car. I know I made it sound pretty easy, but even with the correct line, you can't however just simply turn the car and expect to make it. Just before you turn in, you must prime the game's drift mechanic by letting off the throttle and then getting back on it. It's a quick release of the throttle and then hold again. This tells the game that you want the back of the car to slide out if you turn sharply. In this case, you aren't turning sharply and you have maximum downforce, so what it does is provide just a slightly increased turning angle, which allows you to get through the corner clean and with maximum traction. It's very important to control your stick on this turn. What I mean is, don't slam the stick to the left, you have to feather the stick until you get the correct turning angle and then bring it back to the center smoothly coming out of the corner. Lastly, he uses NOS just before the checkpoint, which takes effect right in the middle of the turn, allowing him to have the maximum acceleration coming out of the turn. He spends only 3.43 seconds under 230 miles an hour, and his speed never dips below 214 for this turn. The jump in this race is critical because it can really set you back and ruin your run. You need to approach it on the correct side of the road and at the correct angle, otherwise you'll end up in the barriers. Stay to the left and expect the map to toss your car a bit right about where this building is on the left. It happens every race, there's something wrong with the game in that spot and there's nothing you can do about it. You're gonna wanna hit the jump on the left side of the road, but pointing slightly to the right so that you end up landing on the right side of the road to set you up for the first turn in what I call the city. Immediately upon landing, Goliath primes the drift mechanic again by letting off the gas and getting back on it quickly to take the turn at full speed. This is probably the most challenging part of Sonic. It's a series of 90 degree turns with varying turning angles due to some of the streets being wider than others. Goliath takes this section perfectly and that's a huge part of why he's able to put up such a ridiculous time. I could sit here and analyze each turn like I did for turn one, but I think it would take way too long and ultimately you practicing is way more valuable to you. So I'm just gonna show you what is possible so that you know how high the bar is and you can practice this as you have time. So starting with turn four, which is the first turn after the jump, this is almost a full speed turn. A small brake tap mid turn is necessary and you will need to prime the drift mechanic before entering the turn. You should be able to take this turn at around 210 miles an hour. If you are using a manual transmission, a downshift after the turn is recommended to engine brake before entering turn five at about 180 miles an hour. Another small brake tap might be necessary to adjust your turning angle. And another downshift is necessary for turn six as you will want to enter it at about 170 miles an hour and engine braking is much more efficient than using your brakes. It allows you to make small adjustments to speed and doesn't risk you over braking. Turn seven is sharp, but allow the car to naturally slide and then hit NOS coming out of it. You should enter it going 150 to 160 miles an hour. Turn eight is a fairly wide open turn that your previous NOS should carry you through and have you exiting the turn at 160 miles an hour and quickly regaining speed on this short straight, leading into turn nine, which you will have to prime the drift mechanic again and tap the brake mid turn to adjust your turning angle. You can take this turn at around 150 to 160 miles an hour, and then turn 10 can be made at about 140 miles an hour. Now let's watch the master in action. This will take lots of practice, but now you know what's possible in this section of the race.
The shortcut is the part where the track you're supposed to follow loops around to the right, but since there are no checkpoints in that loop, you can cut across this brick section. To do this the fastest, Goliath engine brakes by downshifting to fifth just before the turn, bringing his speed to 180 miles an hour as he's hitting the bricks. Keep in mind engine braking is not possible with an automatic transmission. If you're using an automatic transmission, you will need to use your car's brakes. He also primes the drift mechanic and uses his actual brakes to slow the car down to about 150 miles an hour and makes the car slide around the bricks. His speed drops while sliding to 121 miles an hour and upon clearing the brick wall on the left he immediately nosses three times to get the car back over 200 miles an hour. He makes it look easy but this is a very difficult turn to make this cleanly and this fast. The line you take leading up to this turn is super important. You definitely want to stay as far to the left as you can. Then as you approach the uphill section, turn your car and aim directly for the checkpoint flag on the right side of the road. The car will jump just a little bit at the top of the hill. When you hit the ground, immediately prime the drift mechanic and tap your brake as needed to make the appropriate turning angle. You'll want to end the turn on the left side of the road because the next turn is very wide and can be taken easily at full speed. This is the last critical section of Sonic. It is important to keep your speed above 230 miles per hour as much as you can in this section. That means using NOS wherever possible. These turns aren't super complicated and the RSR can take them at full speed without braking. It should go without saying, but stay off the grass and the dirt and don't get into any of the walls. A wall will slow you down significantly and cost you seconds on the total race time. Alright, I think it's so awesome that Goliath has allowed me to make these videos. Huge shout out to him for not only his skill in Need for Speed Heat, but also just being an awesome gamer that sees the value in helping the community get better. I'm really curious if this video has helped you get better. Please leave your before and after times in the comments section for this course. Let us know if this video helped you and make sure you go subscribe to Goliath's channel. He is a racing fiend and does all kinds of racing content. I'll put a link in the description for his full run on Sonic so you can watch the master at work. And thank you to everyone who has been supporting and watching my videos. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Remember you can hit me up on Instagram if you have any questions about this video or any video. Alright, thanks for watching, Trigger out.